Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and I started filming a video of getting this old Desk Pro 4000 up and running. But instead, I found myself having to spar with its BIOS to try to get large disk support. This is that story. All right, so here we are at the test bench and I'm about to turn this thing on and there's a very good chance it's gonna boot right into Windows 98 because that has been previously installed on the drive. I don't think I formatted or deleted anything yet. Let's see. Yeah, yes, it sounds nicer. It's quieter. The CD drive's blinking weird. Well, it's probably because there's a disc in it. Video has not yet initialized. Well, that's no good. Oh, wait, there it goes. Ooh, disc one, 80454. Okay, I heard about this. There's a possibility that this thing does not like hard drives bigger than eight gigabytes, and we're gonna have to flash it. Now, fortunately, a viewer gave me a good lead, and I was able to acquire a copy of a correct compatible setup program for this. If you remember, BIOS setup, where you normally hit delete on your computer, is F10 on this computer, and it saved onto the hard drive. So if you put in a fresh hard drive, you have to start off by uh, with some uh, plain old diskettes, reinstalling that setup program so that you can actually F10 and configure the system. Also in the information that I found was a, a BIOS update or a, a firmware, right? We're not even at BIOS level here. We're at firmware level. Supposedly we'll update the system so it can handle a disk bigger than eight gigs. We're getting a disk error here. Let's see if it can, yeah. It does not like that drive, sir. It does not like that drive. I got a, a disc here, a floppy disc that I put together. It's got a very basic boot of DOS and with mouse and CD-ROM support. Let's uh, see if we can boot this system and see what it says about the hard drive. Ooh, she's hung up on starting MS-DOS. And that is a thing that this computer has the propensity to do when it's not liking the hard drive. One of the wonderful things about this system is I put that multi-boot hard drive in here and I can get onto MS-DOS easily enough with it. All right, we're gonna have to disconnect the hard drive to um, solve this problem so that it doesn't confuse. Now the question is, without a hard drive connected, will it boot now? Disk controller failure. Yeah, well, it's because there's no disk plugged in, right? Ah, yeah. With the disk problem out of the way, I can hear it. It's booting no problem. All right, I do believe I have the BIOS on this floppy here, so you might have to boot off this disk, but let's see what happens. Please wait while ROMPAC identifies your system. ROMPAC firmware utility upgrade version 21200. This utility reprograms the firmware or read-only memory for supported compact systems. Either there are no valid drivers on the diskette or there's no upgradable devices on this system. So according to this information, we have a 586 MROM from 1997. This is a 586C2 I just downloaded from 99. Question is, will it be any more palatable to the system? Let's find out. I do believe the last one I downloaded was 586C. It's like C is lower than M, I guess, but the date's right. Read only memory for supported systems. Nope. I almost feel like that this is just a program and you still need the actual ROM file, which I do have accessible on my other computer here. I downloaded something resembling a ROM, SP8435. This program can't be run in DOS mode. Huh? Oh, hard drive firmware upgrade to fix 1720 error at post. The upgrade will not be applied if the hard drive is not on the list or already has firmware 043B. Well, that sucks. I found this website, drivers.eu slash PC slash compact slash desk pro 2000 6233MMX because this did have a 233MMX in it. Now, this might be a Canadian model and have a Canadian designation, so that complicates things. But it seems to have all the drivers and there's no catch to downloading them. Oh, what happens if we try this firmware upgrade one to fix error at post? but it's telling me it needs Windows 95 NT. It needs Windows installed already. Well, more troubleshooting. I've got this whole ridiculous uh, three computer setup going where if I switch this monitor, that's my uh, proper Ryzen workshop system over there. 
and I got a mouse and keyboard for it. Switch over, I've got this system, and up here, I've got this guy here, which uh, has Windows 7 that gets onto the network, but now I'm about to reboot it into DOS to support these weird little programs I'm downloading and unpack them to the disk. This is probably a case of because they don't describe the drivers correctly, what I'm doing is I'm surfing the net on the proper Ryzen system, and then I save it to my downloads, which is on the network, and then the Windows 7 system can get on the network. And then once I take that information and I put it on the uh, DOS partition, I boot into the DOS. <laughs> it's quite the rigmarole. It's working though. I could just load up the website on the Windows 7 system, but then I'd lose the page every time I have to reboot, right? So this is, this is working for me. Oh, I keep getting the wrong keyboards. It might be a case if we just have to keep downloading ROMs off this website or update programs to see which one fits. In the meantime, we have SP6975, which is supposed to make a disk. It needs a Seagate drive. This updates the firmware on Seagate. On the Seagate. So this upgrades the drive itself? Oh boy. It's possible the Seagate drive I pulled out of here is the original drive. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, this Seagate does have stickers on it that suggest they look like they could be in the compact style. ST33232A. 33232A. This drive is on the list, but this drive doesn't give me that error. It says it upgrades the firmware on this drive. Well, it works fine with this drive. I don't need to upgrade the firmware on this drive. This website came up when I searched for large disk support, but... Oh well, back to the drawing board. Okay, so I found a download that says it's for the Desk Pro 586M models, and it's from 98 as opposed to 97, a year later. It says 586M, so it should have no excuses now. It's SP8434. There it is, yes, 586 ROM, version 121098. So yes, theoretically this should upgrade our thing. Page down, agree, A, burn it to disk. You know, for the record, this would have been all straightforward once upon a time. The only reason why this is difficult is because this system's so old, it's hard to just look up what we need to get it going. All right, let's see what we have here. All right, survey says, oh, it's taking it now. A following is the list of upgradable devices in your computer. Select device to upgrade compact system ROM. Okay, please wait. You realize, I've been waiting a long time by now, Compaq. You've been giving me quite the runaround. Current version, 11, 18, 97. Firmware image, 12, 10, 98. A backup image of your current ROM has been created. Sure, never a bad thing, especially when you're not familiar with the hardware and you're not sure if it's as smart as today's systems. Continue, your firmware will be reprogrammed. Once the reprogramming has begun, it cannot be interrupted. Well, we all know this already. Do not reboot or power cycle your machine. Okay, it's successfully been reprogrammed. Let's hook the 10 gig back up. Now let's power her and uh, see what she says. Booyah! The following configuration options were automatically updated. Disk one, 10,273 megabytes. I believe it's worked. And how will we know if it's boots? IO disk error. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we might have to start from scratch, so let's boot off the floppy and see if we can F-disk this thing. All right, progress that we didn't make before, it booted off the floppy with that 10 gig drive. So if we F-disk, or actually there should be a C. There is a C, there it is. We can totally get onto this drive now. There should be a D, okay. There should be more partitions on here, A, B, C, D, E. There is an E. Oh, how about an F? No. All right, F disk. Yeah, okay, we got three two gig partitions. This disk is active. Now, um, I think we're just gonna, you know, go ahead and wipe this disk out. Whatever, I had like one copy of DOS for the sake of demonstration on the Pentium Pro system. Yeah, all right, delete, delete. We'll delete three, volume label, none, yes. Delete, delete extended, yes. Delete, 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 delete.
We should now have a blank as frick hard drive now. But you know what that means? We install the new fresh setup diagnostic partition and we get this party started. Your hard drive doesn't have a diagnostic partitions. No sir, it does not. Let's do that now. And for some reason it makes you juggle discs back and forth. Yeah, see? I think it just wants to confirm you have the right program before it proceeds. Now we put in the actual setup diskette. It's got this cute little animation. Period, lowercase zero, uppercase zero. Yes, I know there's no lower and uppercase zero. You know what I mean. The letter O. Oh. Put in setup diskette two. Insert diskette one and continue. What diskette one? Are you talking diagnostics or setup disk one? Probably wants diagnostics. This is the least specific it's been in a while. No, it wants set up disk one. You already had disk one. Why do you need it again? In the future, you can run compact utilities directly off the hard drive. Press the F10T at power on. The F10T tip tap tip tip tip. And we're in. Do you think computer setup's any different? No, it won't be. But if we go inspect, it should tell us what our ROM is. Inspect was unable to access, insert the diagnostic disk. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for later. We're done with this now. Now we move on finally to the feature presentation. For we will now attempt to install a fresh copy of Windows 98.